history in the air with LeBron James just 36 points away from passing by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the NBA's all-time scores list, the Lakers hosting the Thunder, and LeBron wasn't playing no games. He went after greatness. First quarter, LeBron drilling the three. Now LeBron spinning. We're now just 28 points away from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's scoring record. LeBron in the second quarter. That's an and one. More King James. Stopping, popping, and pulling the three-pointer. LeBron now just 19 points away from passing by Kareem. You just see Kareem looking on as the King makes that shot. In the third quarter, LeBron really got to grooving. That three goes. Now he's just 11 points away from Kareem. Next time down, another three falls. LeBron now just eight points away from passing by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Transition, the Lakers go, which means give LeBron the basketball. Just six points away from Kareem. LeBron cutting back door. The record is just four points away. LeBron in transition again. Now LeBron just needs two points from history, and here it is. Coming to the end of the third quarter. LeBron James, a shot in history, and there it is! LeBron stands alone! The NBA's all-time scoring record now belongs to LeBron James. And with point thirty-eight thousand three hundred and eighty-eight, LeBron now stands alone as the NBA's all-time leading scorer. You see the family watching, mama, wife the kids watching their guy strive for greatness lebron emotional as the game is stopped you see jay-z showing some love to lebron he was an early supporter of the king laker great magic johnson showing some love to lebron lebron admittedly modeled his game after magic the record is broken. There's still a game going on. You saw Russell Westbrook knocking the three to try to keep the Lakers emotionally invested in this one. It's not going to be enough, though, because Josh Giddy and SGA Shea Gilgis Alexander had other plans. The Thunder get the win. Obviously, LeBron's winning the war of nutrition as he finishes game with 38,390 points. Congratulations to the King, your new all-time leading scorer in NBA history. One of the biggest side stories in LeBron's big night was this lethargic performance from the Lakers. And I want to give them a pass for most of the game because be clear, the, the overall goal in this basketball game was to give LeBron the damn basketball. And everybody on that Lakers team knew there was a goal to, to make sure LeBron got this record on this night. It wasn't happening on Thursday against the Bucs. Don't even get me started. I'll be at that Bucs game. This record was getting broke against the Oklahoma City Thunder on Tuesday night for LeBron James in front of his family, in front of his close friends, in front of some of his peers. It was happening against the Thunder. And it looks like the Lakers team as a whole, the coaching staff, everybody was on the same page with knowing that LeBron was breaking that record. That is a very tough task to still try to go out and win a basketball game when you're literally going. Like LeBron didn't enter this game 14 points away. He had to put up a big number. He ended up with 38 points. It took pretty much every point to get this record. Be clear about that. And he didn't even finish the game. He sat the, the last couple of minutes due to some foot problems or whatever. Like it took everything LeBron had to get this record in this game. And I'm bringing that up to say, Anthony Davis was awful again. He's been up and down. And I and I count Anthony Davis not playing as awful, right? He misses entirely too much time. Um, no disrespect to the brother. I got res uh, ultimate respect for him as a player when, he, when he's locked in. But a game like this one against the Thunder, he was non-existent. And I'm going to be real with you. I wouldn't have been mad at Anthony Davis if he came out and was still aggressive. I was talking to, to one of my close peers, one of my partners. We was talking about LeBron, and we was talking about him breaking the record all day, really, because he was joking with me about uh, going to the game after the game LeBron broke the record, right? Don't even get me started. 
We were talking about what would be the, the mentality for LeBron going into this game. Would he be in his assist mode? Would he try to break the record in this one? Would we wait for Milwaukee? What would Russ's mentality be? What would Anthony Davis's mentality be? And we both knew Russell Westbrook would come in attack mode and be Russ. That's all he ever known to be. Even Russ, you know, gave LeBron, I felt like, a couple extra looks than he usually does. But for the most part, Russ was still able to find his production and get his shots. But the guy who really struggled in the midst of this, finding himself as a number two, was Anthony Davis. He had no impact on either end of the court. Neither. And I've always told you guys this about AD. It can't be defense gets him motivated to play offense. It's got to be offense gets him motivated to play defense. When he's scoring the rock, he will work for you on defense. When he's not getting the ball on offense, he starts to get stagnant. And that stagnancy will make its way to the defensive end of the court. That's why it's important to give him guys like Dennis Schroeder, Rajon Rondo, guys that microwave that ball to Anthony Davis every possession down and never allow him to feel out of the flow of offense. Russell Westbrook actually tried to give Anthony Davis the rock, but Russ's entry passes, sometimes they get tipped. Oftentimes they get turned over. You know, Russ's entry passes to Anthony Davis oftentimes are not low enough, are not clean enough, are not precise enough for, for AD to get to the comfortable spots that he wants to get early in shot clocks. And a game like this one, Anthony Davis never felt a rhythm and had no place on the court. Lakers would have been better off going Thomas Bryant, Rui Achimura with LeBron, Schroeder, and, and Pat Bev if they wanted to go that route or, or Trey Brown, right? This was a no-show for AD in LeBron's biggest game. And again, you can say, hey, he got lost in the sauce with LeBron's big night. But I'm sorry that my expectations for a guy that's going in the Hall of Fame first ballot most likely one day that was just named one of the 75 greatest players of all time last year. I'm sorry my expectation for him and his professionalism and his ability to still find his way in LeBron's big night. I'm sorry that I, I'm, I'm finding it a little difficult to not give him any culpability or responsibility for his pathetic performance against the Thunder. That is not a good Oklahoma City Thunder team. And they're not playing a lot of defense. And they're missing a couple key guys on defense. Anthony Davis, even in LeBron's big night, should have still had his way. There was still enough opportunity for Anthony Davis to get off. He chose to take that game off. And right now we're in a position in time well, this is the first time you're going to hear me say this on this platform, but I do mean it. The biggest gift Anthony Davis could give LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers right now is demanding a trade out of L.A. The Lakers need him gone. He's never going to demand a trade. He plays in Los Angeles. He plays for the Lakers. When things go wrong, he gets blamed, but nowhere near the mainstream blame that LeBron gets. He still oftentimes looked as cuddly and just an injury-prone, flimsy guy. He'll never demand a trade out of L.A. He's comfortable. He lives there. Life is good, even as a number two for an underwhelming Lakers team. The Lakers need Anthony Davis to get so fed up with games like this against the Thunder where he's not getting the basketball when he's pretty much a fourth option on the court. They need Anthony Davis to say, I want something different. I want more shots. I want to make all-star appearances. I want to make all NBA teams. I don't want to fall in the fray. I don't think he'll demand out, but right now the greatest gift – that Anthony Davis could give the Lakers is demanding a trade out of L.A. so the Lakers can start this thing fresh with a player that would be, I don't even know if he's got to be younger, but obviously a lot more easier on the legs, less injury prone, and committed to winning. 
he, like as committed as LeBron is to winning, like in the middle of January playing against the New Orleans Pelicans, in the middle of March playing against the San Antonio Spurs, being there for the playoffs, the Lakers need a real number one. Because right now what the Lakers got, they got two guys trying to be father time. Now, one of those guys is 20 years in and just passed by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the most points ever and has got four championships. The other guy does have a championship, but he's only around the age of 30, a lot less minutes, a lot less playoff minutes, but he's right there, it feels like, physically with LeBron's body. They're both getting older, but LeBron still looks at least six to seven years younger than AD, if that makes any sense at all. But they're both on the back end of their prime. But one should be on the back end of his prime. The other guy should just be entering his prime alongside his other greats in his peer group, like Giannis, like Jokic, like Embiid. The Anthony Davis story in L.A. has become pretty sad. And if he really wanted to give the Lakers one last part and give, it would be demanding a trade away from LeBron James and the Lakers right now and allowing them to start over. But I don't think he's going to do that. 